We good? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, ready? Showtime. <laughs> Please don't add that. That's part of the bloopers. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe Dargo, head of AR Developer Relations. We're here to discuss the culture of innovation at Snap. Innovation, in short, is the introduction of new ideas, methods, or ways of thinking. And here at Snap, we believe in fostering a culture of innovation by offering a suite of tools that empower developers, providing programs that support their visions, and finally, cultivating disruptive use cases to inspire developers to push beyond what's considered possible. Without further ado, I would love my wonderful colleagues to introduce themselves and share how innovation plays a role in their line of work. We will start with you, Jonathan. Hi, I'm Jonathan, and I'm an AR engineer manager here at Snap. And what that essentially means is we get to play with AR all day, every day. Hey guys, I'm Kyle. I'm a design engineer on the spatial design team. My job here at Snap is to build AR products and find new AR use cases. Hi everyone, my name is Siobhan Hart and I lead AR developer programs at Snap, which primarily means that I focus on ways that we can fund and support developers that are innovating in AR. And this year my focus has been on launching Ghost, which is Snap's new AR innovation lab. Thank you so much for the wonderful introductions and I'm happy to be here with you. Now let's dive in. Thank you. So Jonathan, <laughs> what are the products and systems in place to enable developers to innovate? I think that's a really great question. I'll start by going back to history where in 2017 we first launched Lens Studio. And I think this was a really pivotal moment. It's where we said innovation in AR is not going to come just from Snap. In fact, it's going to come from everyone around the world. And so we wanted to give developers the best tool to develop AR. And since then, we've added many different features and capabilities, and one that I would like to call out specifically is SnapML. This was a really interesting feature because at this point, we said last year that technology and innovation and features in Lens Studio shouldn't just come from Snap developers. In fact, if you are a machine learning engineer who wants to build your machine learning models in Lens Studio, you can bring it in and add new features to our AR lenses. Thank you so much, Jonathan. I love that. Let's go to you. What do we look to gain with regards to co-innovating with our community? The way that we think about Ghost is we want to make sure that we're providing ways to tap into communities around the world that are solving problems that are meaningful to them. And that may vary from region to region, country to country. What does innovation look like? There's a developer in Ghost currently working on a project in Puerto Rico where he's thinking about how he can help solve disaster relief problems, specifically related to earthquakes, and he's using machine learning to do it. So it's really interesting to see what the new utility-focused use cases are that we wouldn't have necessarily come up with ourselves internally, but we can support around the world. Thank you so much, Siobhan. And I would like to go back to you, Jonathan. And that's one of the reasons that we released Camera Kit. We want to enable others to make innovative lenses outside of the walls of Snapchat. How can they think of how they serve their customer and their use cases? Let's learn more from Daria at DressX. My name is Daria Shapovalova, and I am one of the co-founders at DressX. I remember myself growing up in Ukraine, and I did not have an opportunity to wear exciting new clothes every day. So definitely that's what we're building right now for everyone to have the opportunity to have an unlimited wardrobe. And basically, we use Snap Camera Kit in our DressX app. The future of AR and the way how I see it is every person in the world, no matter where he or she lives, no matter how much she actually earns, she can have this unlimited wardrobe because AR democratizes fashion. Camera Kit definitely inspires us a lot to create and to actually provide this new use case for all of our customers because now the asset and the video itself is actually such a valuable part of our life because we're expressing ourselves, we're using this language of AR fashion to communicate our ideas to the world and our looks and our mood and etc. So basically for us, this technology really provides a lot of opportunities 
So as for the uh, lens creation, we have lots of creative designers and we did all these amazing collaborations when, for example, one of the biggest singers in Ukraine, she wore a physical top and we recreated the same top, which was a couture in the app and we enabled to all of her fans to wear the same item in the app at the day of her performance for the Independence Day of Ukraine. What got us excited about Spectacles program is definitely the opportunity to test the Spectacles as being one of the like few developers who do that. It excites us as it can take the opportunity of wearing clothes and seeing other people wearing clothes differently. As of now, we did a lot of experiments and we definitely see that with dress acts and all this limited amount of items that we already have in the app, this future is very close with spectacles. Without the camera kit and without the AR use case, this goal would be never achieved. And I see the future where everyone, especially Gen Z and millennials, will have the digital wardrobes and physical wardrobes, and definitely AR will be such a huge part. So where should we take it from? Should we take it from the last question? My last <laughs> okay, wait. Just take it from the top. <laughs> Let's take it back. Is that good? If we were all wearing spectacles with the script in oh, our glasses. Wow. That's the few, well, yeah. you're part of Ghost, you should build that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I would like to go back to you, Jonathan, because I think diversity is critical to innovation. How does that work in your line of work in regards to products? Yeah, that's a really interesting question because it comes in a lot of different ways from the product itself. So for example, if you're building in Lens Studio, we want to make sure that you're able to build inclusive lenses, right? Adding a diversity of skin tones, body shapes, and so forth is really important to our product. So for example, one of our recent programs, the inclusive camera, we're looking at different ways that machine learning or the way we capture images in Snapchat can be shaped so that everyone can be comfortable. And we are looking to everyone for feedback, right? We have this made for me campaign where we need feedback from people that again, it's about not everything comes from Snap, but rather listening to the people around us to build our product and improve it. Thank you so much for that. Now let's pivot to a different question. Let's talk about barriers to innovation. What are some of the barriers to innovation in AR from a program's perspective, use case perspective, and a product perspective? Yeah, I love this question because it's similar to what Kyle was saying earlier about a huge part of the barrier in that we're trying to solve with Lens Studio and the product is how do we make it easier to develop AR, right? We, all of us can imagine new ideas and innovation that can be built and how we can solve the world's problem. But the tools right now are in its early days where you know, certain folks who have dedicated their time can do this thing. But that should never be the case. We want to make Lens Studio the best way to build AR so that the question is no longer how do I make this, but what do I make, right? And so, for example, machine learning, SnapML, is solving this distribution problem. I've spent a lot of time building this machine learning capability. How do I make sure that people who need it get access to it? Well, now you can use SnapML and have access to the entire Snapchat distribution. Another way to look at it is maybe, hey, I'm selling some product like clothing. It's hard for people to try on my clothes. I can sh be shipping that product, but then that requires a lot of logistics. But now in AR, you can solve that by using our 3D body tracking. And all you have to do is bring in your own product into Lens Studio. Speaking about barriers, currently 3D is a pretty difficult thing to get into. There's a ton of different programs. They all cost a lot of money. They take a lot of time to learn. So I think that currently creation for 3D assets is pretty difficult. I also think that if you're coming into scripting, it's something that takes a little bit of learning. And I think what's amazing with Lens Studio is the new visual scripting editor and the shader node editor, which allow users to kind of ease into learning how to script. One of the things that's really important to understand is when you're trying to innovate, you need to create environments that are safe for people to fail. And when you do that, that means you're often 
inviting them to try nascent technology that may not be ready for the public yet. So patience and willingness to kind of engage in that R&D space is, is pretty critical. So when we look for fellows as a fit for Ghost, it's do you have that the time and can we provide you the funding and the internal expertise and access to our tools and team to help bring all of that together without necessarily thinking about you know, the end product launch and is this going to be successful in the market right away. Thank you so much for adding that. Now let's shift gears and let's talk about the future. As we're thinking about innovation, let's think ahead. Concerning innovation, what does the future look like for AR? That's a really interesting question. And unfortunately, I can't actually give a straightforward answer. And that's one of the reasons that we're here, right? We want our community to help co-create and discover this future for us. So how can we build tools that allow creators to bring in data from outside the lenses so that the lenses can be smarter. For example, you know, we have this landmarker technology, you can augment the Eiffel Tower, but now you can augment your home because you want to maybe solve a problem where you want to show where X things are in your home. So I think there's a lot of different things that we're still exploring, but again, it's about the use cases that we talked about earlier, but also thinking about the problems that anyone out there might have and how it can be solved with AR. Jonathan, you said something interesting there about making lenses smarter. And when I think about Ghost in particular, one of our goals is to figure out how we can expand the power and impact of what a lens is and what it can ultimately be. So for us, we, we think about how can a lens be considered a product as opposed to a filter, which is what most people think about when they think about Snapchat today. It's the fun dog ears and it's sending you know, funny faces to your friends and it's a great way to communicate. But what else can we achieve beyond that? So when I think about making a lens smarter, it's what is that product experience that a lens can deliver at the end of the day? And how can we help developers around the world push the boundaries of what's possible today? Yeah, and, and on that note, I think Lens Studio is amazing for diversity because it's so accessible. It's free, it allows anyone to immediately innovate and create. There's a ton of different programs out there that cost a lot of money and are very hard to learn, but with Lens Studio, we have amazing documentation, amazing templates, so anyone can really just learn it to immediately just start creating and innovating. Now, that's a great answer, and I appreciate that. Siobhan, change it up a bit. We've talked about diversity, we talked about the line of work, we talked about programs, product, use cases. Now, can you share with me how you measure success? So when I think about success, it's really about those learnings. Did we learn enough from what we were attempting to do, even if it didn't work? We want to make sure developers find the success that they are looking for, right? And different people, and even different businesses might have different ways that they might look at a product or lenses and what a success metric is, whether it's how many people comes back to that lenses, how many people touches the different interactions in that lenses. And all these type of questions enables lenses to be more than a one-time experience, but this larger, innovative experience that really improves the user's lives. I'd like to touch on the point of feedback, more or less on the product and program perspective. How does feedback really help with innovation? Feedback is so critical to what we're doing, partially because we don't really know what AR can solve. So it's important to get feedback in order to make sure the tool can serve the people who are building to solve these problems, right? So because they will have customers that we are not in touch with, so we need their feedback to tell us, hey, we need these features because it will help us succeed in their projects. So within Ghost, we ask all of the developers that are working with us to share a wish list. And that wish list is really exciting because it consists of the things that they want to do today that aren't currently possible on the platform. So our job is to figure out how we can unlock those capabilities and potentially create those environments or test builds that will help them achieve their goals. And I have one final question. When we talk about innovation, we know it's a journey. It's a never ending journey. And on this journey, there's gonna be successes, there's gonna be failures. I think my biggest lesson is to always remember to be humble. We can have these big dreams about what we believe innovation is going to be. If we unlock this feature, it's gonna change the world. But the reality is not really as simple as that. You may come up with a feature that you're like, ah, oh, we'll throw it in there. Pretty simple to do. And what you'll soon realize is that that's the one that makes the impact. That's the one that people feel, and that's the one that they continue building. And soon you'll see an innovation that you didn't think of earlier. And then you can take that back 
and improve the product. So I really love this notion that we're working together with the community. We want to give them the tools because we ourselves cannot find all the answers. I think the biggest takeaway for me is, yeah, there's always more room to learn. I think flexibility is really important. You know, my philosophy at this point is that roadmaps don't really exist. If you try to set one, it will inevitably change. But I think it, just being open to the process and willing to be flexible and to build on what you're learning along the way is so important. Thank you, panel members, for your time. Really do appreciate it. As you can see at SNAP, we believe in innovation. We approach innovation through three main angles by building with developers through our various programs, building new use cases, and also through our products. We can't wait to see your innovative ideas on Lens Studio. Visit ar.snap.com for more information about our programs and products. And if you're a developer or studio interested in working on an experimental project, make sure to visit the Snap AR site for more information about Ghost and how to apply.